it's April and I want to talk about a book. Like always, I will do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I will have the non-spoilery section up front and then all of my spoiled filled thoughts and rambles and word jumpage at the end. And I will of course tell you when that transition happened. But I binge read The Girl in the Tower by Katherine Arden, which is book two in the Winter Night trilogy. And I have so many things going through my head right now that I this video happened. Now of course because this is book two in a trilogy it will contain spoilers for book one. If you haven't read book one, your warning is out there, but I will continue on into this book. Girl in the Tower takes place immediately after the bear and the nightingale, Fasha, who is leaving her village because she is afraid of being persecuted as a witch. She decides that she's going to try and make her way out in the big wide world. She's going to be her own person. She's not going to conform to the mold. She's just going to find her thing. Through the process of Vasha trying to leave her old life behind, Frost is at the same time trying to convince her that maybe this isn't the best move. And of course there are points where Vasha meets up with all of her siblings and she's got to learn what breaking out of the mold may mean for her own family. Now all of the old world feel and the fairy tale and folklore atmosphere of book one, The Bear and the Nightingale, continues on in this book here. That is what I love most about this series so far is just how old it feels and how it feels like an old authentic fairy tale. It's truly a story all of its own. It pulls in folklore of the Russian time period and the Russian lands and it weaves it into this story that is just breathtaking and magical and I love it so very much. And then you get to see the struggle of Vasha as she's trying to break out of what a traditional woman's role is because she never feels like she can conform to it. There's too much that she wants to do, too much she wants to see and she can't understand why people want to keep on putting her in this box. And I think that is the greatest struggle of this book and what I really resonated with so much. You feel the tension between what this could mean for her family and what it means for herself. Does she continue to live for her family or does she live for who she could be? She has to give up or sacrifice one or the other. But then you also see her family trying to understand who Vasha is and trying to figure out how to deal with her with the mindset of what they've traditionally been taught. They love her, but they can't quite grasp who or what she is. And that is the internal struggle of this whole book. And it is done so very well. You can see the relationship dynamics just growing and building and pulling and tearing and it's heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, annoying as heck, but all the feels are there. And I really, really, really need to get my hands on the next book because it left in a place that almost devastated me because there is some things that build up and slowly burn in the story that just the way it ended, it feels so wrong, but right, but wrong. There's got to be more. So I am very much anticipating book three. I need it in my life. So if you like the old world fairy tales and all of the atmosphere a lot of that brings, I highly recommend that you pick up this trilogy, this book. It is amazing. I love it. I enjoyed it so very much, hence why I binged it. Go pick this up. I highly enjoyed it. And now I have my word dump of things that I just, I just need to get out of my face because it is a thing. So if you haven't read this book yet, I highly recommend that you go read it before I just start like dumping out words because it's, it's gonna happen. Now I can't say that I have too much that I want to say at this point, but the relationship between Vasha and Frost, I loved that build so, so much. What I like about it most is the fact that they don't make Frost human. He's kind of fighting that aspect a little bit. It, it reminds me a lot of the traditional fae folklore. There's something other. There are little pieces of humanity in there, but there's a cruelty there as well that I love seeing that dynamic within a character and just the way he is dealing with Vasha and trying to figure things out and Vasha somewhat aware of what's going on but not really and then at the end where things come to head because she made a very poor choice in breaking his power and then deciding that this needs to end in a way that people don't die 
but you're going to lose him in that aspect because of everything that is going on and all of that heartbreak and the sacrifice that goes on in this book. Maybe it's just because I was extremely jet lagged as I was reading the story, but I, there was just, and yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what was going through my brain as I'm reading all of this. I liked it. I liked it so much. I love Catherine Arden's writing. I love the way she just builds these worlds and these characters. It just feels like an authentic fairy tale to me. I don't know what it is. It's a combination of all of that, I guess, and I need, I need more of it in my life. So I will be sitting impatiently waiting for book three. So if you have read this story, start a conversation down below. I would love, 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 love to hear your thoughts and I heard your beautiful faces. Bye.